Good morning. I'm so glad to be with you today again. And I can't wait to when we get to be together in person. It's going to come one day soon and I'm really looking forward to it. So today we're going to talk about a story that has something to do with this, which is my own made up version of a slingshot. Something to do with these, which are stones, and something to do with how much God loves us. So let's read about it and see. So our story today is from the Jesus Storybook Bible, and it's about David and Goliath. It's in the book of 1 Samuel, and it's chapter 17. Let's read together. God's people had some scary enemies, but the Philistines were the scariest of them all. And now the Philistines had come to fight them. The Philistines had a secret weapon called Goliath. Goliath was a terrifying soldier and worst of all, a giant. A giant so strong and so tall and so scary that no one had ever been able to fight him and live to tell the tale. So there they were, the Philistines standing on top of one hill and God's people standing on top of the other. And every day, Goliath came out and shouted, send your best soldier to fight me. And if he wins, we will be your slaves. But if I win, you will be our slaves. No one spoke. No one moved. They were Chickens! <laughs> Goliath bellowed. Your God can't save you. I'll rip your heads off and I'll have your eyes on toast. His beady, greedy eyes glared at them hungrily from under his horrible helmet as if any minute he really might just gobble them up. And he laughed his terrible laugh. Ho, 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 It echoed horribly around and around and around that dry valley. They're really afraid of him. Well, Goliath might just as well have been a green, slimy monster with three heads because God's people were frozen with fear. Their eyes glazed over and they turned deathly pale. They knew if someone didn't do something quick, if someone didn't save them, but God would do something. He would send someone to save them. Now you remember that David was the youngest son of Jesse. Well, his brothers were soldiers in the army. And one day when David brought his brothers their lunches, he saw Goliath and he saw how scared everyone was. Don't be afraid, David said, I'll fight for you. You're only a little shepherd boy, the king said. And Goliath is a great soldier. How will you fight him? God will help me, David said. So the king gave David his royal armor to wear. Look, he's putting it on here. But it was too heavy and it was too big. And David couldn't even walk in it. I, I, I won't need this. David said. Instead, David picked out of a sm five smooth stones from the stream. One, two, three, four, five. And he took his slingshot 
and he walked towards Goliath. Step, step, step. Goliath walked towards David. Thud, thud, thud. You? Goliath peered down at the small boy. I'm little, David shouted up to him, but God is great. Goliath laughed even a more terrible laugh than usual. <laughs> it went. With just one swing of his giant sword, Goliath could finish the boy off. But David kept going. It isn't how strong you are or how many swords and spears you have that will save you. It is God who saves you. This is God's battle and God always wins his battles. David put a stone in his sling and swung it around and around and around and around and let it go. The little stone flew like a bullet through the air and struck Goliath right between the eyes. And then Goliath stopped laughing. He stumbled and he staggered and crash fell dead. When the Philistines saw Goliath was dead, they ran away. And when God's people saw them running away, they cheered, hooray! God had saved his people. David was a hero. Many years later, God would send his people another young hero to fight for them and to save them. But this hero that's coming would be the greatest and fight the greatest battle the world has ever known. Wow, this is a great story. This is a wonderful story. This story has so many things that I'm really excited to talk about. First of all, let's look at the sling. This is the weapon that David used. It doesn't look like much, right? Nope, but the Israelites were trained how to use them and they used them all the time. Like when they were watching the sheep, David, you know, had to watch the sheep and he had to have something in case bad animals came and he used this and you would put a stone in it and when you swing it, it makes a whirly noise and the harder you swing it and the faster you swing it, the stronger it gets and then you have to let go of one side and the stone comes flying out. That's all David had. Goliath had a giant sword, he had a spear, he had armor. David didn't even have armor. But David had the most important thing that Goliath didn't have. David had God with him. He had God in his heart, and David knew God. How? Because David talked to God, and God talked to David every day. And David knew that God would protect him. How? Because God had protected him once when a lion came to get his sheep. Because God had protected him over and over and over again. So David knew what God could do. Just like I have a friend, his name is Mercer. And when I go to his house, he shows me how good he can play baseball and basketball and soccer. So I know that about Mercer. I know Mercer can play any kind of ball sport really good. But how do I know it? Because I spent time with Mercer and David had spent time with God. So he knew what God could do. So I wanted to show you a few things. First of all, David picked up five stones out of that bubbling brook. Here's one stone, two stones, Three stones, 
four stones and five stones. So what I did is I kind of saw, okay, well, what are five things maybe that I learned from this lesson of David and Goliath? And one of the first things I learned was that David had, I'm gonna put the stone, faith. What's faith? Well, David believed and he trusted that God would help him and save him. Faith is like I'm sitting on a chair and I believe and I trust that when I sit on this chair, it's not gonna fall on the ground and I'm not gonna get hurt. That's faith. So one thing I saw in this story, that David had faith that God would protect him. And he also had trust. And he had trust in God because he knew God and had spent time with God. Can we spend time with God? Yes. We can read the stories in the Bible. We can ask God God, what's that mean? Or you can ask your mom and your dad and you can learn about God and you can live with God and that helps you trust God when you see all the things he does to help you. Another one I saw was strength. Did David have a lot of strength to fight Goliath? Not really. Did Goliath have a lot of strength to beat David? Yes. But Goliath didn't win. David won. Why? Because again, he trusted and he had faith in God. And God has the most strength of all. And God's strength came through David's muscles. And it, when he did that slingshot, run and run and run, God's strength sent that stone flying. And God's strength won the battle that David was in. And God can do that for us. God's strength because of what Jesus did on the cross and because of the Holy Spirit coming down, like we've talked about before, can fill you. God's strength can fill you and help you do things you think you can't do. Like, like maybe you're afraid of the first day of school. Well, God's strength can help you. And maybe you're afraid of the lunchroom. Well, God's Faith and trust in God will help you. And all you have to do is ask him, just like David did. And he beat his big giant. And sometimes things we're afraid of are scary, like Goliath was, and seem giant, like Goliath was. But God is always bigger. God is always stronger. God loves us so much that he wants to help us no matter what. Another stone and another thing that I saw was courage. Courage is like being brave. Brave is like not listening to the fear you have in your heart and your mind. Because even though you have courage, that doesn't mean you're not afraid. No, you can be afraid and still have courage. Courage means you move forward through your fear. And David had that. He had more courage than the king with his armor. He had more courage than his brothers who were soldiers. He had more courage than anybody there, even though he was a young boy, like you are. He was little. That didn't stop him, no. God, through his strength, going into David, gave him courage. And you can have that too. And I can have that. And I've known that because I'm older and I've known God a little while now. And there's a lot of times that I was afraid, but I went and moved forward because God gave me courage, strength, when I didn't feel like I had it in myself. So the last thing I saw was this stone, and this is a few words here. It says, what we have. Hmm. God used what David had to help David. So what did David have? He had a slingshot, and he had five stones, and that's all he needed, because God used what David had 
to help him. You don't have to have a lot for God to help you. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to have the best things for God to help you. God only needs the simple things that we have to help us. And he wants to help us. So there's a few things that we can do today. You're being sent home this paper that your parents or someone can print for you. And it says, for the battle is the Lord's. What's that mean? That means the struggle or the problem or the fear that we have or you have or your parents is not something for us to worry about because God is in the situation. He's in it and he will help us. So the fight isn't ours against fear. The fight isn't ours against anxiety. No. The fight is God's, and if we allow him, he will fight for us. So, here's one thing that Miss Julie did with her piece of paper. She made a slingshot. She has some popsicle sticks, and she has a little piece of pipe cleaner, and she used these, and let's count them. Let's see, she's got one, two, three, four, five, and these are like the five stones. So that's one thing you could do, and that will, you can hang it up in your house, and that will help us remember that God used what David had, the simple things, to help him, and he's going to help us. The other thing is we have the memory verse that we've been working on, and this one is from the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the first books of the Bibles before Jesus was born. We call that the Old Testament. And it's a, what do we have here? We have a phone for the word call. We have a bubble, like somebody speaking for answer. We have a mouth pop, 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 talking for the word tell. We have a giant high mountain for the word great. And we have a strong, muscly arm for the word mighty. And then we have the Bible for the scripture verse. So let's try. So when we see the phone, that means call. It says, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and mighty things which you didn't know. <laughs> let's try again. Call to me, that's God, and I will answer you. He'll answer us. And he's going to, and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Let's do it again. Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and mighty things which you did not know. Jeremiah 33, 3. So how did that work in David's life? Well, he, David called to God and God did answer him. And God did tell him great and mighty things which he didn't know. Well, what was that? Well, God told him and helped him and showed him that you are courageous. You walk through fear, even though you have it. God showed him that you are strong, even though he didn't feel strong. God showed him something he might have not known, that no matter what he uses and he needs help from God with, God will answer. So, one more time. Call to me and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and mighty things which you didn't know. Jeremiah 33, 3. God has great things to tell you about yourself. God has great things to show you about your parents. God has great things that he wants to help you with. If you ask him, he will answer. He promises that in his word. I love that. And the last thing is we have our coloring book page. So we have Goliath, he's big. We have David, he's small. We have his armor and his spear and everything. And David just had the little slingshot and the stones. 
but God helped David and David won the battle. So we can color, you know, his helmet and his spear. Here's the little babbling brook. There is a little song. I hope I can remember all the words I learned when I was a little girl. It was like, only a boy named David, only a babbling brook, only a boy named David and five little stones he took. Only a boy named David. I forget the other word. <laughs> only a boy named David. Oh no, I forgot it, guys, I'm sorry. You know what, if you ask your parents to look it up online, they'll find it. It's the David song. When there's motions and it's great fun. We used to sing it all the time. But, so that's it for today. I'm so glad you were here. I love you, I miss you, and I know I'm gonna see you soon. Take care and be good. Love you, bye.